Now we use the tools and techniques from the previous videos to create a simple bookcase like this. I'll start a new drawing by selecting new out of the file menu and then we'll zoom in just a little bit and select a top or plan view. I use the rectangle tool first and draw it a rectangle. We'll make it 30 by 12 inches. This will be the footprint of my bookcase. It's not necessarily going to be a part of it, but I'll use it for reference as I draw out the different parts of the bookcase. I'm going to draw another rectangle over here to represent the side of the carcass. If you look at the measurement toolbar, you'll notice I have that 12 inch dimension locked in. It's actually displayed first, even though it's not the edge that's aligned with the red axis. This is the exception to the rule I mentioned earlier in the 2D drawing video. When you draw a rectangle on top of another rectangle, or snap to one of its endpoints, that long dimension will be displayed first. You'll see that the 12 is now in the second position since it's smaller. I'm going to use that 12 inch dimension and draw a smaller rectangle here, and this time just add in the short dimension I need to set the width. So in this case, three quarters of an inch. Now if I select this new rectangle and try to move it, you'll see it's actually stuck or connected to my original rectangle. If we want to separate this rectangle from our original rectangle and keep it separated from any new objects that we draw, we need to make it into a separate group or a component. A component is the best choice here. A component has a lot of benefits. Most important is that if we decide to change something in our design, we'll only need to change it in one copy. and Any other copies of the component will update automatically. To make the component, I'll select the rectangle, which uh, it already is. You can see that it's uh, highlighted in blue. And then I'll click on the Make Components tool. This uh, new window will pop up. It's called Create Component. Here we have the opportunity to give this component a name. We'll call it Side. Now before I hit the Create button, I want to make sure that this box here is checked. It says Replace Selection with Component. This box is normally already checked, but in this case it's not because we've only selected a portion of the object. Since having this box checked is going to change the object we have drawn by separating it, essentially cutting a piece out, SketchUp's trying to protect us from ourselves by leaving that box unchecked. In reality, we do want to replace it, so we'll just make sure it's checked. Now if I move this new component, you'll see it's no longer connected to that original rectangle. If I want to move a copy over to the right hand side, I'll hit the control key on the keyboard to toggle into the copy mode. You'll see I'm now holding a copy, not the original. Since I grabbed it at that back corner, I can now use that to snap it to the back corner of this rectangle, placing the right side in the correct position. I can select that object by clicking on it once or double clicking to open that new component for editing. You'll see I get this dashed box around the outside that's telling me I'm in edit mode. I'm going to start by drawing a rabbit in. I'll use the rectangle tool and it will swing out giving me an approximate shape. I'll put in the actual dimensions now by typing in 1 slash 2 comma 1 slash 4. That'll give me a half inch uh, rabbit that's a quarter inch deep. From here, I'll use the eraser tool and erase out the portions I don't need. I'm going to move into a better view to use push-pull. I'll select push-pull and then extrude out the sides to give me some volume. I'm going to set the distance here at 41 and a quarter. This will give me room for a three-quarter inch top and a total height of 42 inches. You'll see that the right side has been uh, automatically updated just by editing this one copy. Next I'm going to move in here and set up the joinery for my bottom shelf. I'm planning on using a dado joint and to set that accurately I'll use the tape measure tool located here. By snapping onto the edge or the midpoint of this line, I can now pull up and create a parallel line to that edge. 
I'll move up here and we'll enter seven inches into the measurement toolbar to set a seven inch guideline. To start that data I'll use the rectangle tool and you can see I get an inference off that midpoint. This will set my 3 8 inch depth perfectly. I'll draw out a rectangle and change my width to 3 quarters of an inch. From here I'll use push-pull and we'll plow out the waste by clicking on the face and moving all the way to the end. If I zoom in here and orbit around you'll see that this new join is complete. I'm going to back up for just a minute here to talk about something. This dado joint that we made with this rectangle could easily be turned into a sliding dovetail. If I use the line tool I could draw out the shape of my dovetail and push pull it all the way to the end. To set up those angles accurately I'd use this tool here called the protractor. And by placing it on my original rectangle I could plot out accurate lines for reference. This is a bit beyond the scope of this introduction but if you're interested in the protractor tool and want to learn more about it or any of those tools click on that question mark at the bottom it'll bring up the instructor here you'll get a brief uh, explanation of how the tool works and at the bottom there's even a link or two to advanced operations we'll go ahead and close this out and we'll move forward at this point I'm done with my guideline I can use the eraser or just select it with the select tool and then by hitting delete on the keyboard I can get rid of it quickly. I need to make room for my uh, face frame by making this side a little bit narrower. I'll use push pull and we'll push this uh, side in three quarters of an inch to make room. Once I'm done editing this component, if I use the select tool and select anywhere outside of that component, I'll close it for editing. At this point I don't really need this footprint anymore, so I'll double click to select the face and edges and then delete on the keyboard to get rid of it. If you look at this uh, right side, you'll see we have an exact copy of the left side. In reality, we need a mirrored copy we need this edge to be flipped and uh, actually facing in this direction. There's a couple ways you can do this. I'm just going to right click and choose flip along and from that menu I'll choose components red. Now you'll see it's reoriented itself with that dado facing in the correct direction. When I use flip along I always try to remember or ask myself which way did I move that copy of the component. In this case I moved the copy over into the red direction. So that's why I chose to flip on the red uh, component axis. Next we'll move in and draw in our bottom shelf. I'll use the rectangle tool and start at this point the top of that dado. Move to the right side and then select the bottom of the dado on the right side. Now I've got the face created for the front of my shelf. I'll give it some depth by using push-pull and by hovering over the shoulder of this rabbit I can now set the depth. I'll triple click on the object to select everything and then hit the G key on the keyboard to shortcut to the component tool. Here I'll give it a name. We'll call it bottom shelf and you'll notice that box is already selected since we've selected all the edges and faces that are connected. So from here, all we need to do is hit the Create button. We'll move up to the top and we'll put in some cleats to attach our top to. I'll click to that upper corner and then somewhere on the edge here. If you look at that measurement toolbar, you'll notice I have my inside dimension already set. All I need to do is add the thickness. So I'll type in three quarters, comma three quarters, and enter. And again, push pull to give some depth. We'll use one by four, so we'll 
push this out three and a half inches. We'll triple click to select everything and this time we'll right click on the component and choose make component from the context menu that comes up. This is a third way that you can use to create components. We'll type in cleat. That box is checked so we'll hit create. Now we'll move a copy to the back. Use move, hit control to enter the copy mode and grab it by this back corner which will allow us to place it exactly where we need it at the shoulder of that rabbit. From here we'll finish the carcass by putting a back on, the rectangle tool again. We'll start at the inside of the rabbit on the left side and I'll zoom in and pin it to the outside of the rabbit on the right side. Now that we have a new face, we can push it down by rotating into a better view. We can set that distance by hovering over the bottom of this bottom shelf. I'll triple click and we'll make a component out of this. We'll call it back. I'm going to move around to the front of the bookcase here and start placing some interior shelves. I want to space them evenly inside the carcass here and to do that I'll create some new snapping points. I'll start by double clicking on this side to edit the component and then left clicking on this interior front edge. If I right click I'll bring up a context menu and I can choose divide. This will break this line into individual segments. You'll see those red squares represent the uh, new endpoints that will be created. I can move the mouse to set my uh, segments or type in the number in the measurement toolbar. So there I've now created three segments out of this one edge. And If I move over top of it, you'll see I now have new endpoints that I can use uh, for reference. I'll click outside the component to close it for editing and then grab our rectangle tool snapping to one of those new endpoints and then over to this edge I'll create the front edge of my shelf I'll replace the second dimension by typing comma three quarters now I have a three quarter inch thick face push pull move it to the back and hover over the back to set our distance and I'll create a component we'll call it shelf Now by grabbing the move tool and choosing the copy operation, I can slide it up here until I snap to that new endpoint. If I left click it's now set and we have evenly spaced shelves. If I had a tall cabinet I could create an array by typing 4x and since that distance is set I now have four copies evenly spaced. I only need uh, one copy so I'll hit 1x. Next we'll start our face frame. I'll draw out my style at the bottom here. We'll make it uh, one and a half inches by three quarter inches thick. We'll use push pull to move it up and set the distance by clicking on the front edge of that cleat. We'll make a component again I'll call this one style, create, and then of course move a copy over to the right side. I'll grab it from this uh, interior right corner. That way I can snap it to the uh, outside corner on this side and place it. I'll draw in my bottom rail and we'll use push pull to give it a width. Now I'll set it flush with this bottom shelf and if I want to put a quarter inch reveal I'll just click with the push pull tool again and push it down one quarter of an inch. I'll triple click and create a component. We'll call it uh, bottom rail. I'll choose create 
and move up for our top rail. I use the rectangle tool again. We'll snap from this point to this point and create a new face. We'll push this face down two and one quarter inches to set our width. Next I'll triple click to select everything and we'll make a component. We'll call this top rail and create. To help keep me organized and make things a little easier I'm going to select all the components of my face frame and now by right clicking on one of them I'll bring up the context menu and I'll choose make group. Now this uh, face frame is all connected and if I move it you'll see I can get it out of the way quickly when I need it. If you hit the escape key it'll move back to its original position. Next I'm going to add my cove molding. I'll start with the rectangle tool again and we'll draw a 3 quarter by 3 quarter inch square. I'll use the circle tool to create my cove shape with the end point here and a 5 eighths inch radius. Now I'll use the eraser and get rid of the unwanted edges. Now I'm left with a usable cove profile. I'll select it and then create a component. We'll call it cove molding. And create. I'm going to use follow me to wrap this around the sides and front of the bookcase. When I use follow me I need to make sure I have that path included inside this component. So I'll double click to edit it and then draw in my path. I'm going to use the rectangle tool to make things quick. Once I have it set, I'll erase out the back edge since I only want it around the front and sides. I'll create a selection box to select my path and it looks like I selected too much so I'll just redraw that box again and now I can see I've only selected my path. Using follow me on the face I'll extrude it. If I rotate down here, you'll see now my cove molding wraps around the front and sides. I'm going to draw the top next. I'll use the rectangle tool, snapping from the back corner to this front corner, and then push pulling out a three quarter inch thickness. I'm going to Select this face and pull it out one inch. And then by double clicking on the front, I'll pull that out an inch. And double clicking this side, we'll pull it out an inch as well. I'm going to use Follow Me to shave off the profile instead of add it. So I'm going to use the Arc tool and create a bullnose shape. I'll start at the corner here of the cove and move up in the blue. Snap to this line and bulge. When I get the half circle point I'll left click again and now this face on the end is what I'll be using to shave off the top. I'm going to pre-select my path by holding down the shift key and using the select tool. There we go and now I'll use follow me on that path. And You'll see I've shaved it off. I'm left with just a little bit of waste if I triple click on it and hit the delete key, I can get rid of it pretty quickly. So here's my new bullnose profile wrapped around the top. I'll triple click and we'll create a component. To finish up this bookcase, we'll wrap the bottom with some base molding. Now I can draw out the profile for the molding like I did for the cove molding above. Or a second option would be to copy and paste in a profile that I've done already in a previous drawing. A third option would be to select a profile out of a personal component library. This is a topic I plan to cover in a future article, but I just kind of wanted to introduce it here. If you find you can't wait, I'll post a link to my YouTube channel at the end of this article. 
there I have a couple of short videos that cover uh, this topic. I'll place my molding uh, at this back corner here and we'll double click to edit the component and we'll use the rectangle tool to draw in a path for follow me. I'll race out the back and get a view that will allow me to select all those edges. Alright, now that they're all selected, I'll run follow me. I'll go ahead and close out this component window. And now by orbiting, I can view my new bookcase from any angle. If I want to get inside and see some of the details, I can select a component and by right clicking bring up the context menu and choose to hide it. I can select multiple objects like this and hide those, leaving me with just the side of the bookcase carcass. If I move up to Windows and Outliner, I'll get a list of all of the components and groups that are inside my drawing. These grayed out items are the items that are hidden right now. If I select this group, you'll see that's our face frame that we created. If I right click on it, I can choose to unhide it. I can also right click on the group name, go down to rename, and give it a name that means something, like face frame. When I'm done, I can right click and choose to hide it again. I can also quickly and easily add dimensions to my drawing by using the dimension tool located here. By clicking from endpoint to endpoint, I can quickly pull dimensions for anything that I might find useful. Once I'm done with the dimensions I think I'll need, I'll select them all and then create a component out of them. You'll notice that my new component is now in the outliner and if I right click it, I can choose to hide it. To make all these components visible again, I'll left click on the symbol next to the first component and then hold the shift key down and click on the symbol next to the bottom component. This will select everything and I can now choose to unhide it. I'm going to go ahead and hide these dimensions one more time and we'll create some scenes that we can use for a presentation or for printing. I'll go to view, down to animation, and select add scene. Now I've created a scene. I can move to a new perspective, get a view I'm interested in, and by right clicking on that tab, I'll click add. I'll create a third scene. This time we'll use one of the construction views. We'll get rid of the components out here and make our dimensions visible again. I'll select the view I want and to add a scene I'll right click and hit add. Now if I cycle through the different scenes you'll see I have preset views that I can use to share my model with.